Okay. This talk is going to be about integration of rational functions with quadratic denominator. Okay. And essentially it, it will sort of go over the typical types of integrations of rational functions. We're just doing the quadratic case separately because uh, it just maybe helps to be concrete rather than talk of general strategies too much. So first I want to say that we'll assume that the denominator is monic, which means the leading coefficient is one on the denominator. Because if it isn't one, you can just pull that out. We'll also assume that the numerator has degree less than equal to one. If the numerator had degree two or higher, you would first do a long division. So you'd have sort of an improper fraction. You do a long division, convert it to a mixed fraction, do the polynomial part separately, and the leftover proper fraction would be of this form. So we'll just be tackling this type of integration. Okay. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 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 it, this this numerator could be could i mean this a could be zero if a is zero it would just be a constant uh, over a quadratic if a is non-zero well it's it's a linear over a quadratic okay so we're doing both cases now we have to make sub cases based on the sign of the discriminant which is p square minus 4q the reason why that why the sign of that discriminant is significant is that controls whether the denominator can be factored or not and how it factors and if it doesn't factor also it can do it slightly differently so let's first consider the case where the discriminant is positive what does that mean the denominator has factor. has a factor so there's a two distinct real roots okay how are the roots given well i have the formulas here okay i've taken alpha one to be the smaller one and alpha two to be the larger one okay now that the reason i made it monic is sort of we we sort of avoid problems of like you know uh, various things with this thing coefficient here coming up and just make the formula cleaner okay now what happens if we can do this how do we how do we do the integration if if it's of this setup you can write that down the problem so we want to do basically what do we want what integration do we want to do integration let's put this way integration of a x plus b over x minus alpha 1, x minus alpha 2, dx. Okay. So how do we do this? Well, we have to basically do this using partial fractions. So what's a partial fraction? C1 over x minus alpha 1 plus C2 over x minus alpha 2. Uh, and and now we re, you can recall maybe if I mean we could solve these uh, explicitly. Let's just do that. Okay, uh, you could. Uh, Okay, one way you could do this is you could actually expand and compare coefficients of x and constant terms. If you did that, you'd get a is uh, c1 plus c2 and b is minus c1 alpha 2 minus c2 alpha 1. And now you would have to solve this system of simultaneous linear equations in the variable c1 and c2. That's a little tedious. There's another sort of... Uh, cleverer way of doing it, which is you plug in, so this is one way, the other way is you plug in x equals alpha 1 in here and x equals alpha 2, so separately, if you plugged in x equals uh, alpha 1, you'll get a alpha 1 plus b is c1 alpha 1 minus alpha 2, so c1 becomes a alpha 1 plus b over alpha 1 minus alpha 2. Uh, this, this manipulation is valid only if you already have this as a linear thing. If it's not a linear thing, you, I mean, it will still appear to work, but it will give a wrong answer. Lean, I mean, it's already degree less than equal to 1. And the similar thing, you will get C2 is A alpha 2 plus B over alpha 2 minus alpha 1. Uh, this sort of, this approach generalizes whenever you have distinct linear factors, you can get the answers like this and in general maybe if you've seen this if you're doing rx over x minus alpha 1 
x minus alpha 2 x minus alpha n then the coefficient or like if the coefficient for 1 over x minus alpha 1 is going to be r of alpha 1 over alpha 1 minus alpha 2 so it's, it's product of alpha 1 minus all the others that's sort of the general thing there's a separate video on that now in our case we just have a, a x equals uh, alpha like it i mean when you do this type of thing there's only one factor just that minus the other so it's the it's the numerator polynomial evaluated at alpha 1 divided by alpha 1 minus alpha 2 and c2 is the numerator polynomial evaluated at alpha 2 divided by alpha 2 minus alpha 1 so these are c1 and c2 now you have these and now you integrate what happens when you integrate what will you get hmm what does this integrate to uh, c1 times ln absolute value x minus alpha 1 plus c2 ln so x minus alpha 2 and now c1 c2 you plug in from here okay so let's write down the answer then by there we have plus c coming in at the very end so you get a alpha 1 plus b over alpha 1 minus alpha 2 natural log of x minus alpha 1 absolute value plus a alpha 2 plus b over alpha 2 minus alpha 1 natural log of x minus alpha 2 plus uh, c where c is in r okay uh, now i want to make a comment quick comment which is that uh, that 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 these that the, the solution the answer is a linear combination of these two functions right Mm -hmm. And the fact that you have these two functions is governed by the denominator. The numerator doesn't play a role in determining these, like what the two things here are. The numerator only plays a role in determining what the coefficients are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, another way you can think of it is that sort of uh, the answer will be a linear combination of these two functions. And the numerator is determining what linear combination it is. Okay, you can actually think of this in terms of linear maps and all if you've seen some linear algebra. But the point is the denominator is what controls what these things are. Okay, the numerator controls what these, what the numbers here are. These will just be actual numbers when you plug in numerical values for a, b, p, and q. Okay, remember alpha 1 and alpha 2 are both have expressions in terms of p and q. Now if you want to write this really explicitly, you can also plug in the expressions for alpha 1 and alpha 2 in here. Okay, mm -hmm. then you'll have a completely explicit description of the answer in terms of a, b, p, and q. Okay, but I don't want to do that because that you'll just get radicals and stuff here messed up. And in practice, you do first factor it and then do this. You don't have to remember this formula. If you understand the partial fractions method, then you can just sort of retrace those steps. Okay, let's look at the next case. What's the next case? P e square minus 4q. Is zero. What does that mean? There is only one root. But it, it has a multiplicity of two, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens in that case? Well, let's see. Let's try to understand what happens. In that case. Okay, so we're just checking some papers, getting something out for you. Okay, so we want to understand the case, the case that you have a repeated root. So let's call the repeated root sigma. Okay, so x squared plus px plus q is x minus sigma squared. So what do we get? We are trying to integrate ax plus b over x minus sigma squared dx. Okay, now how do we do this? Well, and what is sigma by the way? Sigma has to be equal to negative uh, p over 2. Okay. Sigma is, is minus p over 2. I mean, when you just try to complete the square, that's, that's the only way to work out. Okay, now how do you do this? Well, you want to write this basically as something over x minus sigma plus some constant over x minus sigma square. That's what we want to do. Because each of these we know how to integrate. Okay, so that's the goal. So how do we do this? We write ax plus b 
as a times x minus sigma plus a sigma plus b. Okay. Now, so, so now we get ax plus b over x minus sigma square is a over x minus sigma plus a sigma plus b over x minus sigma square. Okay. Now we can integrate it. So the integral is a times ln x minus sigma. Now you're integrating x minus sigma to the minus 2. You get x minus sigma to the minus 1 with the minus sign. So you'll get minus a sigma plus b over x minus sigma. Let's, just, let's copy this down. And remember, sigma is just my negative half p. Okay, so, so everything, all, all our formulas are actually in terms of a, b, p, and q, but we are just not, not writing in those terms just to make it sort of uh, less tedious. So you get a natural log of absolute value x minus sigma minus a times sigma plus b over x minus sigma squared. Sorry, no, over x minus sigma. x minus sigma plus c, c is Okay? So that, that's the thing. Now notice again, the numerator doesn't affect what these two uh, sort of pieces are, right? Th these are the two factors, 1 over x plus sigma. I mean, ln mod x minus sigma and 1 over x minus sigma are the two things for which you are taking combinations. The denominator is what controls what those two things are. The numerator controls what the coefficients are. Okay? Okay, so let's now look at the final case. p squared minus 4q is uh, less than 0. What happens in that case? Doesn't have real root. Doesn't have real root. So what do we do instead? Hmm? Uh, make it into square. Yes. So, so here's that our starting thing. We start. We write x square plus p x plus q as x minus beta whole square plus gamma square. Beta is negative p over two. That's just the completing the square thing, and gamma is whatever is left after you complete the square. It's square root of q minus p square over four. Okay. This is the whole thing under the square root. Okay. Uh, I mean, you can, you, you can, you can remember these formulas or you can just sort of try to complete the square visually. You sort of try to figure out things and just subtract it off, which way is more convenient for you. Okay. Let's write down the thing then. So we have got ax plus b over x square plus px plus q now becomes x minus beta square plus gamma square. Okay. What do we do now? Well, we need to separate the numerator into uh, two types of pieces. The first is which with the constant part. The other is, is something which involves the derivative of the denominator. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to write ax plus b as some constant times the derivative of the denominator, which is twice x minus beta, plus another constant, the constant times 1. Okay? And we'll, we'll then find strategies for doing sort of each of these pieces. Let's do the, let's try to find out what these constants c1 and c2 are. So what do we get? ax plus b is uh, 2c1x minus 2c1 beta plus c2. So what do we get? A equals to 2c1. Yes, we can equate coefficient of x with each other and we can equate constant terms with each other. So what, what's the other thing we get? B equals negative 2c1 beta plus c2. 
Good. So what do we get solving? We get C1 is A over 2 and uh, C2 is what? Hmm? Uh, C2 is B class C1 A. Oh, B plus A beta. beta. <laughs> Good. So now we have these, we can uh, write down explicitly also ax plus b over that is, so ax plus b over x minus beta square plus comma square is, well what's it, it's a over 2 times twice x minus beta over x minus beta square plus comma square plus a beta plus b over x minus beta square plus comma square. Okay, now uh, we won't write, we'll just write on the integral now directly here. The first thing, what does that integrate to? Are you down here? Mm -hmm. The first piece, what does that integrate to? You have derivative of something over that, what does that integrate to? Uh, What's the integral of, of g uh, prime over g? Hmm? Uh, ln. So it's ln of the expression in the denominator, right? Yeah. This is x minus beta square plus comma square, which is actually back to the original one, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Uh, plus, now, you have to do a beta plus b, I'll take out. Okay, now what happens? What's the integral of 1 over x minus beta square plus gamma square? 1 over gamma arc x minus beta. Arc tangent of what? x minus beta. Over gamma. Uh, yeah, over gamma. Okay, plus c. Okay. Let's just check and that right. Let's start. Okay, good. So, and in this case, what do I want to say? Well, I want to say that 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 the that these two functions, the functions here, depend only on the denominator. The coefficients, however, depend on the numerator. Okay, so again, the denominator is what controls what the sort of functions are, whose combinations you'll be taking, and the numerator controls the coefficients. Okay. So, uh, okay, so, so, and so that's true in all three cases, right? In all the cases, the denominator controls the things whose combinations are taken, and the numerator is controlling the coefficients in a, in a linear manner, okay? Uh, but, but the nature of the things is different based on the type of uh, denominator. If the denominator has distinct factors, you get two logs. If it's a repeated fact, you get a log and a one over x minus something. And if it's a quadratic thing, you get a log of the quadratic and an arc tangent uh, of the a square completed thing. Okay. Uh, now, in practice, what you'll be you'll have uh, is you'll have actual numerical values of a, b, p, and q. Uh, you'll have to first figure out which case you are in. Then you can, uh, if you remember these full formulas, you can just, of course, directly apply them and get the answer. But you don't have to memorize these full expressions, which are quite a bit to memorize. You, if you understand the methods in each case, you can sort of retrace the steps and get it. Okay, so it's up to you whether you just want to sort of memorize this full formula and just plug in for any numerical values or you just retrace the steps and do it. Okay.